Okay guys, if it's in the news, it must be accurate. According to CBS Channel 4 in Colorado, hyperbaric does not work for TBI and PTSD in our vets. Or is it possible that they're repeating another myth and misconception surrounding the hyperbaric industry? In an attempt to continue to dispel the myths and misconceptions that unfortunately still haunt the hyperbaric industry, I'm gonna do a video review today, going over, in this case, a news report discussing the impact of certain hyperbaric oxygen research on a certain group of people. And I'll go through the video, share my thoughts, share my responses, and try to dispel any myths if there's any issues inside of this report. Veterans with mild traumatic brain injuries have been turning to something known as hyperbaric oxygen treatment. It involves a decompression chamber like divers use. Absolutely. Veterans have been turning to hyperbaric oxygen for TBI or traumatic brain injury as an attempt to reduce the symptoms associated with these types of injuries. But a study released today concludes the treatment doesn't work. CBS4 Health Specialist Kathy Walsh joins us now. And Kathy, you first did a story on this treatment back in March, I believe. I did, Karen. And I was told back then that many desperate veterans were seeing benefits from this treatment. But this latest clinical trial, done in part at Fort Carson, had disappointing results. Before we even go into those results, I have to say this. First of all, a study's results are only as good as the study's methodology in the first place. So I'm not sure which study they're referring to. I'm not sure what else they're going to say about hyperbaric oxygen, but I know enough to say that until I see the full study, understand what they were after, understand what their methods were, understand who funded the study, and even what went into data collection and data processing, I'm personally unwilling to accept someone else's summary of said data. I would also say that having done research myself and being heavily involved in the research arena, I also understand that many times data can be manipulated, unfortunately, which leads to inaccurate release of information regarding the study itself. So let's see at least what this study had to say. It was just a uh, hit and run attack. 10 years ago, Donald Martinez got caught in a bomb blast in Iraq. Two deployments later. PTSD, traumatic brain injury, sleep apnea, migraines. No medications helped, so a desperate Martinez turned to the Rocky Mountain Hyperbaric Institute. Back in March, he showed us how he spent time in a hyperbaric chamber, inhaling 100% oxygen. The increase in oxygen availability helps heal the brain. Dr. Julie Stapleton told us we with the treatments, really she's seen improvements in up to 80% of patients. While we can't rely on patient response and the subjective information that a patient may share with us with regard to their response to our therapies as the only measure for whether or not the therapy we're delivering is effective or not, we also can't dismiss that. Patient's response to the therapy, favorable or unfavorable, is one piece of this puzzle and as important as any other piece in collecting and understanding the impact that therapies are having on the people that we're exposing them to. So the fact that this clinician has shown this person and over 80% of the other patients that she has treated have responded favorably, how could we just discount that and dismiss that as if that weren't true? But a report released today disputes that. According to a clinical trial done in part at Fort Carson, hyperbaric oxygen treatment on military members with post-concussion symptoms showed no benefits over a sham procedure in an air-filled chamber. Okay, now I'm going to get upset. There are a number of studies inside the hyperbaric industry where methodology led to results that while the results were in line with the methods, the methods were actually inappropriately applied. In other words, this particular study compared people being treated in a hyperbaric chamber on 100% oxygen at a certain pressure. I'm not sure which yet. And that's being compared to them being on oxygen under pressure at, again, I'm not sure which pressure yet. However, we already know that even mild exposures to hyperbaric, even air only, still produces a number of viable effects on our biology and physiology. We know that mild pressure of air-only chambers reduce inflammation. We know that air-only exposures to mild pressures stimulate stem cells. So to use air-only chamber exposures as the sham in the study already completely removes this study from being a reputable source of information. Essentially, they're saying, we fake treated this person, we really treated this person, 
and they had similar responses. But what they're actually saying is, we treated this person at some lesser amount, and we treated this other person at a greater amount, but they had similar impact, and therefore, there's no result. This is an incredibly misleading piece inside of a number of hyperbaric studies. However, symptoms did improve in both of those groups compared with patients who received no supplemental air chamber treatment. Oh my God, did you hear that? Symptoms did improve when compared to people who weren't treated at all. In other words, here's a control group, they got nothing. Here's the air only fake treatment. Here is the 100% oxygen real treatment. Both of these groups improved compared to the control, but because there wasn't enough difference between the fake treatment and the real treatment, the treatment didn't work. Do you hear what they're saying? It's incredibly misleading. We will get right back to that video, but just real quick, if this information is helpful for you, if you don't mind, I'd really appreciate, like it, subscribe to the channel, and then share it with somebody who you think would benefit from this type of information. And now back to our video. In March, I asked Martinez about prior research. Studies say this doesn't work. Yes, the studies do say that, but yet here I am. Studies also say that it does work. There's a number of studies that say it doesn't work for TBI and concussion, overwhelmingly with poor methodology, and a number of studies say absolutely that it does work. Reached by phone today, Martinez told me he's up to about 100 treatments and he still believes they have helped reduce his migraines. The study authors explain that this way. While they found the hyperbaric oxygen treatment had no benefit over eight to 10 weeks, it appears the daily interactions with the study staff did. Did they just say that the treatments weren't why he was feeling better, that just the interactions with their staff? Is that what they just said? Kind of sounds like benefit over eight to 10 weeks, it appears the daily interactions with the study staff did. So now they just basically dismissed the fact that this therapy may or may not be helping this guy and said that the only reason he might be feeling better over the last few months is because he's had a positive experience with their staff. Now, I do believe heavily in relationships and connections with people. I do believe that the connections and relationships we have with people are part of a value exchange and an energy exchange, quite honestly, that also could either add to or take away value from other therapies that we're doing. But they just fully negated the fact that this therapy might be something that's working well and helpful and said that essentially that he's building nice connections and relationships with the staff and therefore he's feeling better. Reached by telephone today, Dr. Stapleton told me she has a lot of questions about this latest clinical trial. She says it's impressive that the military studies have had consistent results, but she also points to civilian studies that consistently find the hyperbaric oxygen treatment is beneficial. That's an interesting point. The overwhelming majority of military studies show that hyperbaric oxygen is not consistently effective for TBI and PTSD while the overwhelming majority of civilian-related studies on TBI, concussion, and PTSD do show that it helps. What does that tell us? Either that the methodology that one group is using is different and or maybe better or worse than the other, and or the rationale behind what data we're trying to pull out of the results might be a part of the issue. In other words, if you don't want this therapy to be effective, or you don't want to admit maybe that this is a problem inside of the military as a whole, and that we're not looking for meaningful solutions because it wasn't our fault that they're suffering from these issues. There's a lot of reasons why one organization or group of people might use a certain methodology for their research while others are utilizing a different type of data collection or a different type of methodology for their research. Again, I'm always skeptical of research because I know what goes in and behind the scenes. For your information, the largest study ever on vets with TBI and PTSD is currently going on at the University of South Florida, where they are collecting the most amount of information on the most amount of vets ever collected on any hyperbaric project, let alone on TBI and concussion. That is in the works as we speak, and we anxiously await the data collected from them because this will be a much bigger and broader understanding of what impact hyperbaric is actually having on these people suffering from TBI and concussion. If you're curious or interested to learn more about the issues inside of research, research design and methodology, as well as some of the research that I did on hyperbaric oxygen, you can click right here. We did a whole series of videos on 
research, research methodology, and the research I did looking at hyperbaric oxygen and the impact on inflammation, cognitive performance, and of course, biological aging and epigenetics. Thanks again for your attention, and we'll see you on the next video.